Hi, welcome to Transfiguration Today. Thanks for clicking on us, especially if you're clicking on us for the first time. Get comfortable and enjoy. It is that time of year again when the clerical deck of the Archdiocese gets shuffled. And that means two of our priests are moving forward. Father Archangel Cardenas will be returning to his religious community, the Society of St. Paul. In his four years here, Father Archangel has been a blessing to both the Hispanic and the Anglo communities and has displayed a great willingness to serve others. His order has asked him to go to New York City to work on a new mission. Two years ago, as a freshly ordained priest, Father Dominic Tran came to Transfiguration as his first assignment. He always opened up with a joke, made him a crowd pleaser, and his eagerness to help showed his dedication to his vocation and to this community. Father Dominic has been assigned to St. Michael's Church in Gainesville. Join us at the 5 p.m. Mass on Saturday, June 18th to give thanks to these two men who have served our family so wonderfully. Back on May 29th, Transfiguration was truly blessed by the visit of Donald Cardinal Worrell, the Archbishop of Washington, D.C. Cardinal Worrell was in Georgia to visit his family, and he celebrated the noon mass with our parish family. We're one in what brings us to this altar. Here on this altar, Christ will join us. The bread and wine will become his body and blood. We will be invited into the mystery of the Eucharist. And Christ changes us by inviting each one of us into communion with himself. The reason, the reason we, we can pray and sing together is because we are one with each other, because we are one in the Lord Jesus. The Cardinal has visited Transfiguration multiple times over the years, and he's expressed a fondness for this community that is clearly mutual from anyone who meets him. Monsignor, I have so, so many very happy memories of coming to Transfiguration Church, coming to this parish, uh, masses, baptisms, uh, all of the elements of the life of the parish. And so I can assure you this will find a very, very significant place in my office where when I look at it, I'll be reminded of this wonderful parish and of your great and warm welcome of me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. After the Mass, Cardinal World spent time meeting with parishioners, taking pictures with many of the long line of people who had a chance to meet him personally. We want to thank the Cardinal for his visit and look forward to hosting him again. The registration for the 2011 and 2012 Religious Education Program is now open, and it's easier than ever to register. The prep registration has gone digital, and it is now done online. The link for registration is available on the home page of this website and it's done through an online form. Now before you get started, it'll help to have your parish envelope number handy. Registrations are coming in fast and furious and we're ahead of last year's pace for registered students. So if you want to make sure you get your first preference for classes, register now. For some help on the registration process, you can watch the tutorial video on the prep registration page. On Wednesday, May 25th, several of our First Communion children joined Father Dominic and many people from our community for an evening Mass and May crowning to honor Mary, Mother of Jesus. May is the month of Mary, and one way Transfiguration honors Mary during this time is in our annual May crowning, which is sponsored by the Marian Hour Ministry. Almost two dozen children, many of whom were dressed in their First Communion outfits, took part in the special Mass, procession of roses, and crowning of Mary at our Holy Family statue. Have you ever been curious about the world that Jesus grew up in? Now is your child's chance to experience it. A special summer camp like no other, Hometown Nazareth is Transfiguration's summer Bible camp, takes place June 20th through the 24th. It will be a full week of friends, food, music and fun, and you get to see firsthand what life was like when Jesus was a kid like you. To find out more information, call the prep office or sign up at transfiguration.com. Perpetual Adoration offers each of us a special opportunity to spend time in the presence of the Lord. Let's hear from a few parishioners about their experiences with adoration in their own words.
Perpetual Adoration was making an appeal for people to come out, and I thought, why not take one of the more difficult hours in the middle of the night? And I've always had one in the wee hours of the morning. It's my own personal time with God. Adoration is so special to me that from my sick bed, I want to be here. Adoration is that time when you spend quality time with Jesus. We have an opportunity 24-7 to pray for not just our intentions and wishes, but to intercede for all those people that during the week you say, I'll pray for you. To, to pray for our priests and staff. To pray for the church. If as Catholics we believe the Lord is present in the species of the, of the host, then to me it's as if Jesus were sitting on that altar and I have an opportunity to come in and, and spend time with him. It's just all wonderful. But it's just a quiet time and it's just a, a special time that you just feel like you're with God for an hour every week and I just, I just have a good feeling when I leave. And it's just a time away from everything else that's going on in your life. Basically, I think everybody should try to make time for it because um, I think a lot of people have gotten away from praying, really praying, talking with God. For the poorest children of Toledo City in the Philippines, life can have little or no hope. But for the kids who become wards of the Lingap Center, there's an opportunity to flourish. And now for the story of John Ryan in this Look at Lingap. Um, in, when he was in elementary, he got in the National Science Competition. Uh, and he placed first in his school, first in the city, first in the district, first in the region. He went to the National Science Competition and he placed second in the nation in the six, when he was in like the fifth grade. And he was competing against kids who were in high school. The kid's a genius. And we, um, when this year, he's at, in his first year of high school, he wanted to go to the science high school, which would be, it's a public school, but it is the equivalent of uh, our MIT. It's where the really gifted kids go. And he, um, they only accept 40 students a year. And it's very competitive. They have to take entrance exams. There were four or 500 applicants for 40 positions. He scored third. But what's nice about the story is Think about it. Where did I find this kid? Sitting on the edge of a pig trough at a pig slaughterhouse with no hope whatsoever. What a loss to the world. He's our little Einstein. And just think, if the world had not didn't have the benefit of John Ryan. And that'll wrap it up for another edition of Transfiguration today. Thanks for clicking on us. Come back again after June 22nd. We'll have a fresh new edition of Transfiguration today. As always, can we help you publicize something? Just contact Matt Calvo, Transfiguration's Prince of All Media, and he will take care of you. I'm Dan Blankowski. We'll see you again next time.